Hello, my name is Dominic Underhall House and welcome to another episode of Moonbreaker. In today's episode, we have got something exciting to look at. We have got the experimental build of Moonbreaker and we're going to look at just diving straight in and seeing what we can find out. So, if you don't know what this is, this is something that's only just been posted on the Discord and it's something that the devs have been working on that we're all very excited for. I love this intro music. I'm just going to let it play a second. There we go. Right. Anyone who doesn't love that intro is wrong. Sure, you might hear it a lot, but I think it's great. Okay, so we've got the option of playing a tutorial. We're going to have a look at that in a moment because I've heard rumors that there might be a brand new tutorial. But what I want to do first is talk about what this is. So we've got here new experimental build. So I hope you had an amazing holiday season, a wonderful new year. Spent a lot of time reading through the feedback on the Null official Discord, social media, and responses to surveys, which. I think I've replied on all of those different forums, maybe not on social media, but through every other forum I have done. Uh, and it's been invaluable in helping us shape the next steps for Moonbreaker as seen in our last dev vlog. We want to get these changes into your hands as soon as possible. Today we're introducing a daily experimental build for players who'd like to provide feedback on in-development content for the next big Moonbreaker update. It will update every day, include new scenarios and battle conditions, crews, maps, features, and they'll be relying on us to tell them what we think. So, your Moonbreaker account on Experimental will be separate from the default build of the game, referred to as none in Steam's listed betas. You won't have access to any of your paint jobs or progress you made there, which is perfectly reasonable. It sounds like this might be you know, changing or wiping. Oh yeah, I forgot the next sentence. You'll encounter more bugs on this build and we might need to reset accounts on Experimental from time to time. Won't ex affect your progress on the default build, which is great. You can just do this completely free without worrying about anything. I would highly recommend not completing any detailed paint jobs if you're sentimental about them. There's a few people I know who've already been trying paint jobs on the new models, knowing full well that they're going to get deleted just for the challenge. So, excited to provide daily feedback on the development. Here's how to do it. We've already gone through and done this. This is how we've got to this section here. And we can switch back and forward to the default version of Moonbreaker through the same drop down menu, which is something that I'm going to have to remember to do because sometimes I am going to forget. With all of the changes coming to Moonbreaker, we anticipate the next update to be the default build of the game will happen sometime in late February. So, this is a sort of, you know, swings and roundabouts thing. It's a bit bittersweet. I was hoping it would be just after the season track had finished. However, it was pretty clear that, you know, there was a few hints at things that they're going to be working on a lot of stuff. There's going to be a lot of things that are in development. I imagine it's probably with the amount of feedback we've given and some of the things that are coming are going to have taken a lot longer to implement than we might have expected. So I think this is perfectly reasonable. I was sort of half expecting it. It would be very surprising to me if we did go straight out of that into the new one. All I wanted was some news. You know, I've been pushing on the Discord, we're like, can we get some news? We can get an update, what's going to happen? And I think this is the big news. And honestly, this is really exciting to me. So uh, it will give them time to gather feedback, make tweaks and balance changes as needed. And while they're making some big changes, they'd love the feedback on them in Experimental, which is what we're doing here. They also have the Discord server as well. So, what I want to talk about first of all is how this is, in my opinion, one way of doing early access right. So, I've never really been drawn into by early access games, because a lot of the time, they've either been completely broken and unfinished, or, you know, you see all these reviews and playthroughs and things where things just don't function as intended, they're not what was advertised, or that sort of thing. Whereas Moonbreaker, the core build of the game is really, really polished. It just needs further development in terms of features and options and, you know, different things for the future. And that's exactly what we're going to look at here. So, really, really keen to sort of jump into it and see what we can find. And it's this gives you an option of not only running through loads of iterations, loads of different things to look at, even if you have an idea that, you know, if it's fairly quick to implement, you just throw it into experimental build, see what the feedback is, see if it works in the real game. I already know there's some things in here that they've said, are interesting in themselves and then maybe tweaking it one way or the other. So I've uh, so Jester, who's if you don't know, Jester the Food Digester is a, one of the well, is the only sort of regular Twitch streamer for Moonbreaker. Go check out their channel. Uh, and he sent me a list of all the things that have you changed in the, in this version that he's noticed. However, I wanted to dive straight in before looking at this and see what you can find out. For some reason, I just wanted to click the portraits and see if there's anything else in here. I don't think there will be, but there's some inclination I'm just like what if there was something in the portraits that we haven't spotted yet I imagine these are just the core portraits yeah so there's no new ones in here so that's a good start but I've been told there are a couple of new units so I guess the first thing to do isn't going to be that quite yet 
we're going to look at the tutorial module one. So I've heard there's actually a couple of tutorials now, different ones, one of which is currently up and functioning. Ooh, we've got like a training Welcome area. To the glorious Methodory Academy where you'll learn how to survive in the reaches. I'll show you a good time. I mean, serious informative training. So I've been told as well, this Maximus is obviously not the same voice actor as regular Maximus. I believe this is one of the people that work in the sound team. And like we said, this isn't sort of the final iteration of it as well. So I also love the fact that looking at this, it looks like they've just taped these circles down, which is great. There waits Crankbait, a notorious smuggler from Blasco's Refuge. Let's party! Inspect the model by holding down the left control key. Okay, well, I'm hoping that this is not supposed to be something I can do yet, because so far I can't hold down the control key. Let's see if that's... Okay, now, okay, okay, we've got these nice little sort of 3D things here. We can still rotate, which is nice. I like this as sort of like an attention grabber. There we go. That still does work as intended. Perfect. Okay, what's up next? Moonbreaker is a turn-based game where each unit can move, attack, and use their abilities each turn. That is correct. Select right. crankbait so we can move her in for a melee attack. Okay, so we can select crankbait. Melee units at the moment we can't zoom in and out, so I'm assuming we'll be able to at the moment. Strike. Let's smack that target. Okay, that's good. So we can't use right click move here either, so we're gonna have to click move. We're gonna move to this side so we're just Oh there we go, the camera's moving now. Um Okay, so I can't actually move. Uh, okay. Oh, I can move the arrow keys to move this. Okay, so maybe the first jump into this new tutorial hasn't worked quite as intended. No valid targets. Is there a button on the keyboard I can press? Okay, so I think we just have to call it a day on the tutorial. It doesn't seem to quite be functioning. Yep. Well, at least we know there's a new one coming. Oh, is there not even an option to quit the tutorial? So we've got all these still, which is good. I wonder if this is going to be changed at some point. We've still only got Zax, Exterior, and Astra. I don't didn't think they'd give us access to the uh, next one yet. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to cut here and come back once we're back into the game. We know not to try the tutorial and experimental for now. It did say it's going to experience a lot of bugs. I was aware of this. I didn't know the tutorial was one of them, but it's fine. It is what it is. This is already a very different tutorial to the initial one, and I like the fact that it's got a bit of voice acting here. So I'm going to jump back in and see what we find next time we log back in. Okay, we are back in. We've had that little crash, but like I said, this is the sort of thing to be expected on an experimental build. I don't think that we're going to have, you know, anything like this happening in the, the main client, most likely. This is where all these things get fixed. So absolutely fine with that happening and we're going to just jump into the next section the first thing to look at is the season track i wanted to just to see if there was anything different here so we've got the same season track same ending date so there's nothing different on here whatsoever we do get the uh, probably the fun experience of unlocking it all again in the experimental build obviously discord's going to be the same we've got all of these at the same as previously so i guess we look into collecting paint and there are supposedly a couple of new units in here to look at in fact first of all let's just change our uh, Change our image here. Let's go Ferg. We love Ferg. So, collect and paint. We've got these little splash screens that were new in one of the previous updates. I still love these. And I think I can't avoid it any longer. We're going to have to have a look at the new crew and a look at reviewing them. And what I want to do here is see is there... So there's not a way so far of organising by set. And we haven't got any new factions listed in here. So we're just going to have to go through and have a look and see what we find. So the first one I've spotted here. So just going to literally trawl through all of them. I've spotted one already, but I want to make sure we don't miss any. So the first one we've got is Crash. So let's have a look at the brand new unit, Crash. So Crash is 7 Cinder. That's already exciting to me. Like, the fact we've got our first ever 7 Cinder unit is fantastic. The model is gorgeous. This is ridiculous. Like, this feels like some sort of Wildstar meets Tyranid meets Crash Bandicoot villain all ma mixed up into one. I love this, like, headgear thing. Because to me, this 
this looks very obvious that these are actually like looks like shoulder pads and a slot for your head to fit through. So I don't think this is designed for someone of this size. This doesn't look like his. It looks like he's just gone, right, it fits, stick it on my head, call it a day from there. So let's look at the abilities. Seven Tinder, it's a 310. So that is pretty huge. Uh, may attack a touching unit. If it survives an attack by a touching unit, immediately retaliate. Hey, what? If it survives an attack by a touching unit, immediately retaliate. I don't quite understand how that's not a normal retaliate. Oh, that's just the description of melee. Oh, they've put melee in. Okay. That had me going for a second. I was like, how is that different to normal? But yeah, there we go. Melee units now have an actual key keyword explaining it. So, 310, pretty big. No armor or anything like that, which is pretty obvious considering looking at the rest of his body. So what's the big selling point here? Two cinder flux capacitor. Attack all touching units, then permanently gain plus one attack and lose one health. Well, this is awesome. This is like Extilior just gone mad. He's gonna get angrier and angrier, spin faster and faster and get more and more damage. You could just start using this with spare cinder just to ramp up his attack in the, like, in the back line somewhere. This is awesome. I love this. Yeah, that's fun. I'm going to look forward to trying this out. This is uh, like a hell of a finisher. Hang on. Drum Dancer Talali should work with this because it's attack all touching units. It's not just damage all. This specifically says attack. If this, is, if this works as an attack, Talali should be able to make this double attack. If it doesn't work as an attack and just works as a... Uh, sorry, as a, an ability, that needs to be reworded. But... Obviously, we've now got here as well the try and testing ground section, which is something that I know that Charlie mentioned previously. We're going to be able to look at things in the testing ground and try them out. Awesome. I love having these things here. We haven't got any lore yet. We haven't got any stats. That's fine. These animations are fine. Is there anything new in these? Doesn't say anything here. So, that's our first new unit. I love that. That's going to be great fun. I'm glad we've got some more top end units because. Top end ones need to be impactful, and this really is. It's going to be an AoE clear thing. If you've got, say, this could work well with like a Chuck and Co, a Zax, you know, pull everything everything in together, and then just absolutely melt them with Crash. In fact, the fact that I thought of this and also Crash Bandicoot, I feel like that might have been subliminally messaged into me. But I love these little faces on here as well. But to me, that feel feels like a what was it, the do Doctor Insanity or like the Nitro guy, something like that. Anyway, next up we've got Dr. Feelbad. Oh my goodness. This feels very Subnautica-esque. If this guy didn't have like a cloak and guns, I could see him swimming around in like the Lost River or something. So, we've already got basically acid water pistols built into his arms. So these aren't actual arms, these are robot things. These are his arms. This is like a mounted system. I mean, this one looks like a lot of fun to paint. You can have great fun with that. So, another seven cinder creature, or crew, poison, so we know what poison does, but it's now it's got a description. Drain, every turn lose three cinder. So this has got an ongoing cost. Interesting. So you're not going to be able to do anywhere near as much once he's out on the battlefield, so this better be extremely you know, potent. When it hits a unit, create a noxious glob. Uh, noxious glob. Deal one poison damage to all units in the area and again at the beginning of your next turn. But what does the Noxious Glob do? Maybe this just puts down a thing. So maybe this puts down a little AoE thing. So I feel like this needs a highlightable thing where you can look at it and see what it brings up. But that makes sense to me. Like a little area denial, a double poison trigger. It's ranged as well, which is nice. With poison is really interesting. And the fact it deals one poison damage to all enemies and at the beginning of your next turn, that kills anything. Anything without armor, that just dies. So if you can immobilize something, this guy is going to be absolutely a good friend of Shrapnel. Oh, not Shrapnel, Snareling. These two are going to go great together. So a really cool looking ability. I'm really glad that we've actually got some like actual text on these. It's quite exciting. So let's see if we've got any more. So we've got those two first. Flurry. Flurry is the next one we've seen. I've seen someone painting this already. So we've got a chef, already great. Let's have a look at the model. I'm not reading the left yet. This reminds me of um, robots, the little dishwasher robot from robots that he makes. 
uh, to help his dad in the restaurant. I love it. So we've got like a super whisk, a chopping knife, a cleaver, and a blender of some sort on a chef with a little overclock gauge. So six cinder one ten. It's not sold on the stats so far. This better be a good ability. Resilient. Damage dealt to it is reduced to two. Oh, not by two. Two two. So anything that's three damage is reduced to two. Interesting. Okay, I'm all right with that. That's a, an interesting mechanic. I think like I could see there being design space something like that. It's just sort of like it caps how much damage it can take. Uh, when it takes damage, deal two damage to all units in range. So this is throw them in the front line situation. If you can get this with a um, what's it called? An Aegis Defense Dome, they either don't damage it at all, or if they do eventually get one damage through, then they take damage. This is cool, I like this. I'm not sure how useful it will be, I feel like the stats feel a little bit uncomfortable, but I suppose you could just run in and retaliate something and just... You could do this with a Broken Vengeance and just go mad. Awesome! Okay, so let's have a little further down. I don't know if there's too many more. We've got Noxie. Noxie is our next one here. So this looks very much like a sort of... Almost, so these are all little toxoids. And what's he firing? Little maggots for toxoids to go and fetch? Okay, let's have a look. Resilient, defends the swarm. So another one that reduces damage. 1 6 for 5. If damage to create a toxoid, max 1, gain plus 1 attack whenever a toxoid is destroyed. So it fully just makes a toxoid, the unit. That's awesome! We're going to just be firing toxoids at people. Oh, I'm going to like this. This is going to be a fun set. Also, cool face. I love the hair as well. Yeah, this is great. We're going to be just launching Toxoids at people, scatter vines. Oh, there's going to be sets everywhere. I'm so keen for these new units. I cannot wait to get trying them out. I'm not going to be doing this video. I can't fit it all in in one. Unfortunately, I'm doing this really early in the morning and I have to get to work in about 15 minutes. So, really keen to just sort of look through everything I can do here. We have got Turncoat as our last one. So, Turncoat is... Okay, this looks very... For some reason, this reminds me of Yin Gao Shua Sui. So, looking at that, I love this headdress thing here. This, for some reason, reminds me of the um, Ghost Leviathan in Subnautica as well. A little sickle here, the creepy hand. Like, Of course, everyone sat here with the Methodori helmet. So, we've got one on Astro, one on this. We've got... This is looks like a... Blindsider Esley style or Fate Twister Tantan helmet, so Turnco out here killing everyone. So force into two six, your mine. Immobilize rival crew. Next turn gain control of it if still in range. Oh my god, Yin Gao Shua Sui. I was about to say that at the beginning. But we have a Yin Gao Shua Sui ability. Wow. So is it I'm I'm assuming the gain control must just be for one turn. But if it's permanent maybe it's until you kill this unit because it's not a very tough unit six cinder is not tough but this is cool if you find a corner of the board where your opponent can't do anything about with one unit you just stun that and hide around the corner or like immobilize it and hide around the corner that's awesome really cool it definitely reminds me of you gal trust away also okay so what i'm gonna do next i'm gonna quickly try and create a roster we can skip through this so what I've heard, yeah, here we go, is that you've got 10 roster slots at the moment, and here, most importantly, you can pick your assists. So this is really interesting. I think I've heard that the assists actually have a cinder cost associated with them. Yeah, so like Plink is one cinder here. So Stimburst is two cinder. Have they just matched all of them to the cooldowns and cinder costs? Yeah, so they've matched all of them just to the cinder cost cooldowns. Maybe slightly less here, nano shield. I'm not sure I like that. I think they've said that they're not sure about that themselves in the dev team, but it's quite cool being able to pick your assists. I still think I like a bit of the randomness, but I think at the moment the randomness is too big of a swing. So let's just pick Stimburst because I love it. And honestly, Disruptor or Plink will probably be my next option, but Plink for one Cinder seems good. No new captain here, so we'll just pick out Extilior because we don't represent him very well anyway. And let's go with... We're going to start by just putting all the new things in. We're going to try one little AI game if we can fit it in. Let's just go Dr. Feelbad. In fact, I might actually swap this over for Astra just because free Cinder. Uh, Noxie. 
and turncoat. I think someone said maybe we can't start a game with all the units in the same roster. I like this, it's got a little warning thing that tells you how close you are to having it completed. Okay, so we haven't missed any new ones out, let's just double check. Okay. If I've missed one here, that would be quite hilarious. Okay, haven't missed any, so we'll just put in a few early game units. I know that I'm putting the same things in, I always do, but we're just here to have a bit of fun. Make sure we get to the late game. Where's Beatrice? I like Beatrice. There you go, stick her in. And one more. Let's stick in Snarling to see if we can get something to try out. And I am going to swap this for Astra just to get the extra Cinder out because we've got seven drops now. So let's save this, see if we can jump into an AI game and see what happens. Again, this is the experimental wheel, it's the very first day of it. So there's a good chance that this could end up being slightly buggy. So let's see what we can work out. Let's say I, I'd, I'd love to know if there were more cargo run options stuck in there, but not yet. Uh, oh. Oh, we can't pick our own custom lists. Okay. Well, I guess that's it for the moment. We're not going to be able to find out what this is. What I will do is I'm going to jump into a cargo run now just to see if I can find any of the new units in cargo run. I'm not sure if that will be the case. I'm only going to do one just in case. But if not, I want to know what you guys think of this. I'm just going to pause the video just a moment and I'm going to go see if we've got anything that we've missed from the message I've got from Jester. And hopefully we can then just wrap this video up from there. Okay, we're back. So it seems like there's one of the bugs that exists at the moment is we can't actually select the two most expensive units. And that is Crash and Dr. Feelbad. So we're just going to have to jump into a game with another new roster we've got here. Oh, interesting. It shows Stimburst and Plink here as that. I don't like the way that's demonstrated, but I imagine that'll change. I'd love just to see the icons here with a little like cost next to it, but I think these costs are changing anyway. For, by the looks of these, these costs don't look the same as the normal ones anyway for some reason to me. They look slightly different, but that's absolutely fine. So I believe there's lots of in-game changes as well. I think for now, I'm going to be able to jump into one AI game and see what we get. And then maybe I'll be able to make a more in-depth video about this a little bit later and see what we find out. So, we're going to jump into this with three new units. We're going to play them as soon as we possibly can and figure out what on earth they actually do and see how they work in game. But there's also more to change as well. Here we go. So here's the first thing that we've seen. We've already seen VP listed on the map. We've got three things at the top here that we don't know what they are at all. I'm assuming battlefield effects. And now we've got choose starting position. So... I'm assuming we have to choose somewhere in that square, or in that circle, square, what am I about? Personally, because we're Astra and we're a little bit slower, let's go with, oh, we have to click choose starting position. We could go all the way over here and just try and hold that objective turn one. So let's go with that and see what happens. Oh, a little bit of, I think that was different music there. That didn't sound the same. Okay, it's still in there. okay. Yeah, so Plink is now the Cinder costed. We're going to move straight up here. Shoot them. And we're going to try with our 10 unit bridge, which is still great. Okay, the end turn button's changed as well. And we're going to pop Maximus down just in this area. Hang on. This feels a little clunkier for some reason, but also Maximus looked... The base size looked bigger there than the animation, so I think we control this now. It looks like we do, but I'm not entirely sure. So let's see what our opponent does. Okay, they're not going to deploy onto it. What are these? The first crew you deploy in a turn gains plus one health. So does that get us the VP, or did that not? Do we have... Oh yeah, we've got a little number here for victory points. That does need to be a bit clearer, obviously, but good. We've got two victory points. So I think it's the first ten wins of the match, yep. So first crew you deploy in a turn gains plus one health. First crew you, de crew you deploy in a turn gains charge. I don't know how we get to that. Undeploy crew have ambush. Now, I'd love it if I could figure out what ambush was. Because that's not something I'm familiar with. So obviously here we should have just played a Cinder Orban, but I wanted to try out the VP first. So like my battle mask. We'll try and just poke down Talali a little. Ooh. Okay, there we go. Another thing you might notice as well, we've got captains at 25 HP. So I've talked about this previously as to how I think that's actually a very big deal. It's going to be changing a lot of the way that the game works in future. As in, rush lists aren't quite as drastic, but we've still got a lot of impact on them uh, on the game from the HP. Basically, everything lives a little bit longer. 
And if it lives a little bit longer, we're in a, a situation where aggro isn't quite as prevalent and the victory points actually do matter. There's supposed to also be interactable things on the map as well, but I'm not sure what those are yet. Okay, so nothing here that screams out at me. I'm still curious as to what ambush is. Okay, nothing else I can see, so we're just going to end the turn here. I don't like this Syndicost thing either, personally. I already feel like I just don't want to use my assists, because I just want to spend it on my crew instead. Oh, interesting. Does that mean that... Hey, watch it. Does that mean that we do hold it or don't hold it? Or can you only get these once? This is good last night. One we didn't get any points button. for that, but none of them... Is that because they're on it at all? No. So maybe we have to go somewhere else. So let's find out, what does killing oh, a crew I do? My lucky hmm. <laughs> but obviously Maximus, we wouldn't really want to do this normally. We're going to gain our extra cinder. Kill this. In your now it's green again. I don't understand why we didn't... Oh, because that unit was actually on it and we weren't. Right, I guess, so it was on it when we were, so you have to be the only unit on there. Let's go with... I kind of just want to stick Flurry down. I'm going to put Flurry down right up here. Insolent line uh, Maximus can just run away a little bit. A time. Uh, who's moving? Oh, Astra had another move, yeah. Honestly, I think I'm going to stick Astra up here to make it harder for them to just hold this objective so that we hold it in our turn and end the turn. So we killed a unit, we don't get a VP for that. So maybe these change as the game goes on? Okay, so they're looking to go for that now. So I've if we can kill that, soon. that's good for us. So Flurry does. When it takes damage, deal two damage to all units in range. Which is my time. Pretty decent range, unfortunately. So. Oh, no, no. Oh, wait. We're arming it. We don't even get it now. Oh, I don't like that at all. A whole turn us. until we get to use it. That feels terrible because now we can't even stop this scoring very easily. I don't the like it not being sweat. immediate. That feels pretty bad to me. Okay, so I'd have rather just used Into the Breach here and played something else out, else out that could have helped. So I guess we go for... Beatrice over here instead. Uh, that was a mistake because I'm going to be chopping everything up. Let's just chop everything and see how much damage we take. Oh, does she have charge? She does. She does have charge. Okay. So in that case, I should have played something else. Just take that hit. At least this way, see what Flurry does. That felt like a Katarina from League of Legends. That that attack there. So this is going to be the only game we play for now. I can't have this video going on for like an hour. Okay, we've got a switch back back in. But hopefully soon we can play our next unit. So we can. I want to try out Noxy next. I like the whole fact we've got multiple if damaged units now. So we've got Broken Vengeance, we've got Flurry, we've got Noxy. So we gain... Hang on, why are we on 7 now? We were on 2 before. And we've got 3 this turn. I don't understand why we're on 7. Maybe we did get 2 from this previously? I'm not quite sure what's going on. Why have we gone to 7? Did we miss the 2 that we got previously? Is that what it was? Because it's entirely possible that we could have actually got 2. And just not realised it. Okay, well, let's just try and kill this regardless. Okay, so we killed that. I actually think I'm going to deploy over here, stick Noxy down, just to try and get one turn of using that as well. Uh, Beatrice, I should guess, just moves into this, so we are in range, and we get to hit, hit the uh, switchback. And then, obviously, we get a better angle of flurry here. Doesn't look like we can hit anyone, so... Okay, we did. I didn't check that properly. Very strange. Okay, we're going to move back again just to protect this. So we've got Stimburst now, but we can't even blink. I don't like having to arm things. It feels very weird. Oh yeah, we've got Charge. Oh, we should have put this in range. We'll deal with that next turn. Yeah, because we want to we wanna actually take damage with this and make free Toxoids. Toxoids sounds like fun. 
Oh no, wait, Someone we're gonna win. I don't wanna win. Oh, I guess we're gonna have to win too early. We've oh, blocked our opponent off with the victory points, so I think we're actually gonna get to 10. Oh, that's uh... Anguish builds strength. Yeah, we won. That felt very quick. Like, obviously our opponent in a real game would be a little bit more aggressive on that. I will say this victory background is quite unsettling. It, I found that quite difficult to look at, so I might have to feed that back. As a, I like it in theory, but that actually felt a little bit disorientating to look at. But yeah, that game felt really fast. I feel like, you know, if they don't deploy straight onto those objectives, if that's not the like optimal positioning, I don't know how you're going to cope with that. Like, Beatrice is going to be ridiculous in this. If you can just move forward and plonk her down straight in the middle of the enemy objective, that's going to be such a challenge to deal with. Like, you can never claim that objective again. It's just going to end up with two Beatrices slowly slapping each other. Okay, I'm not sure if we're going to end up with anything uh, coming through from here, but I do just want to say that I'm loving all the changes so far. I think maybe the whole battlefield things at the top left were a bit too many of an effect I still don't know what ambush does, there was no way of me finding it out that I could see uh, giving everything charge and plus one HP felt quite kind of weird maybe it would like switch between them as the game goes on or like after a certain number of turns or rotate or even just have one of them for the duration of the game but they're a really cool effect, I just think maybe that was a bit too much to go on in one game uh, victory points, great, love the system possibly a bit too easy to score at the moment but I cannot wait to play more objective based games I love objectives anyway I'm working on a 40k army that plays objectives very interestingly so cannot wait for this I'm just checking Jester's message to make sure I didn't miss anything deployment zones are interesting I think maybe they need to be a little bit bigger but also not necessarily closer to the opponent so in that deployment zone that we had there were options but there weren't loads of options you know it was very much a you are pretty much in the same area, whereas if it's maybe a bit wider and longer, we could have chosen to go in different, you know, different area down there. Or even choosing which spawn we get could be very interesting, so that's an interesting one as well. There's supposed to also be harvestable cinder crates somewhere on the, back, on the map, so I don't think there were any that time, but maybe I missed it. And anything else we need to see on here? Uh, we saw the new tutorial, but for us it didn't work. And some, oh, apparently some of the battlefield effects don't work anyway. So the assist thing is the one thing that I'm I wasn't as sure on, so I wasn't as sure as being able to have like that delay, but all in all, this is how early access is meant to be. We've got access to the main client, which has got all of the sort of the solid things, the sort of the decisions that have been made, the you know, the ones that obviously they're not set in stone, they can always be changed again, but that's like the core version of the game. And on here we can just go wild. We can go absolutely wild all the way through and just do crazy things from here. I kind of just wish I had something else in the background to show you, but I'm just gonna do my little wrap up now. I cannot wait to get my tea stuck into this some more. There's going to be more videos coming on this. I'm going to be trying to figure out all the different things you can do in PvP, PvE. I just want to get stuck into it. I want to see if any of the new units are in cargo run. I really want to try out Turncoat. This is a great, great change for Moonbreaker. I'm really excited. I hope everyone else is too. I want to hear your wildest things that you can do with this version of the client. It's open to everyone who's got early access. Every single person can do this. I'll pop the link in the description as to the blog post and it, in there it will tell you all the instructions. Please go give this a go if it's something you want to try a little bit of variety. I want to hear everything about it. I'm going to be in the Discord constantly. I'm going to be keeping this refreshed. Like every time I get a break from work, I'm going to be checking it. And I'd love it if you guys could do the same and just let me know what you think. I want to go through all the feedback possible. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please hit that like button. Please hit the subscribe button. I'm really excited even more so for the future of Moonbreaker. Obviously, some of these are just implemented as like, you know, ideas rather than like polished final things. So don't take any of this as gospel. Super exciting future for the game. And most importantly, have a good day.